Hey guys, I don't know if you've ever looked at your printer and thought, wow, what if water or dust had to get into it? And for that reason, I'm going to be making a waterproof slash dustproof cover for my machine. Follow along exactly to see how I do it so that you could possibly do the same for yours. Okay, now we also have our ink tank which is on the other side which comes out an extra 120 so we are going to go with 2.7 is our length so now we know what our distance is from left to right which is 2.7 but we have to keep in mind we need to decide how far down we're going to go with our cover now just keep in mind let's say for instance you're doing a sublimation printer and you've gone and done your cover and it's just resting right here and if you go ahead and print something and let's say there's a bit of wind that dust cover is going to slowly rub against your media so you just want to be careful to think do you want it to be a little bit higher or do you want it to go completely over and make sure you take out whatever material that you've printed take it out of the machine so you've got no worries whatsoever for me i would prefer to have a little bit higher simply because if it runs down the water at least is going to come on and go further down and not damage the main component of my machine. So we need to make sure we've got a top piece and our front piece and back piece. So go ahead and measure our top. Now keep in mind we've got cables that side that we don't want to pinch or destroy so I'm going to leave myself 100 from the gap there and then 100 from this side so we're going to go with 540 as our top piece. Okay, now that we've got the top, I now need to measure my back piece. Now we're going to keep in mind that I'm not going to be going past my ink tank tray because to cover this really doesn't make any sense, there's no electronics here. As well as most of the electronics will be covered as far as the connections down there if you measure yourself correctly. So I'm going to go with about 250 just so it just touches there and it's not too short on the, the back 250 now i could make this 250 here exactly and do 250 all the way across or if i wanted to cover those points there i could make one little piece extra longer so let's see if we can do it if it makes sense in our design and program So we had 250 there, but in order to cover all the electronics this side, we need 350 in order to do so. So that being said, I'm also going to measure this area here so that I only have an extended piece on this side. 460, now we just need to get our side piece. We've already got our length and I need to cover 460 in size. Now that we've got all our measurements, all we need to do is now go to our designing program, put in our templates and the sizes to see what kind of design we come out with. So let's quickly go do it. Okay guys, we're here at the computer now. Um, I've got all the measurements I need in order to make up this template. I've got the background that I need as well, which is the same colors we used on our hoodie for AM. So we'll go ahead and use the same background purely because it's got lots of color and it's quite a nice color to use so let's get started all right so now that i've got the design that i'm looking for for our background which is going to be this really nice blue with lots of different shapes our first one that we're going to do is the top and now we measured that to be 2700 by 540 and what we're basically going to do is for the top i just want to use this background as it is we're only going to be put some writing on the front portion of this make half of this design and flip it around because we also need it to match in color so now we've got our top design already done now we need to move on to the sides now i want my sides to flow with this design going across we go ahead and open and our sides are going to be the width is going to be 460 our height is going to be 240 for 
the 1250 for the one side remember we've got the ink tanks on the one side and then on the other side we have to make it a little bit longer purely because of the cables on the one side so this one will be the left hand side of the printer now remember we want to use the same design and the way it flows through so that it can look the same so it doesn't have to match up exactly it just has to flow the correct way okay so now that we've got that side done we can now move on to our other side which is going to be bigger purely because of our ink tanks that we have so we're going to leave the width at 460 and this one we must remember we measured the cables to be a lot further which was 350 down instead of 250 so the height of this one is going to be slightly different now again i'm going to use the same design make sure it flows completely through okay so we've pulled in our design let's just now match it up it doesn't have to be exact you can use a little bit different color on this one okay that one is done now we need to do the front and the back all right so now the front we're going to copy the smallest side and have an overlap on the right hand side because remember right hand side has the cables so our width is going to be 2700 as that's the width of the machine and then our half we're going to go ahead and measure at 250 okay now again i want to make sure it's flowing the same direction as the first one which is the top and the only difference here is I would like to put in some wording purely because this is at the front of the machine this is where it's going to be seen the most from everyone that walks in so we put that design there and then we can just quickly go and find an AM print and we're going to go ahead and put AM and this one I'm going to put in the top left hand corner and the top right hand corner the equal distances okay so now that's the front done now all we need to do now is the back now the back we're going to have to have a little bit different so remember because at the back we are going to be doing two different sizes when it comes to our heart so we're going to do the left hand side of the printers where the cables are at the back and that's going to have 350 going down whereas where the ink tanks are it's 250 so we've got to have that slight difference in height but rather go with the bigger size because you'll see why now okay so now that we've got that now we have to keep in mind that we need on the left hand side where the cables are 350 by 460 of a bigger block okay so 350 high and we need to make sure this is 460 wide and that is good enough there now we need to make another rectangle purely because we now need the other half of the machine from the other side. So put that into the corner, drag it across all the way to the other side. Remember we need 250, so just make it as close as there is. And that's perfectly fine. Okay, so now what we need to do is merge these two because we're going to use this as a template to cut out the actual size. <clears throat> so now we've got to do is select our black block that we've made to size. We unhard our artwork and we go and cut it. And then from there you'll see now we have got the design including our gap here where our cables are going to be covered. And then we've got the smaller side where our ink tank will be, which is around this area. So in essence, now we are finished. Now all we need to do is save them as JPEGs, head on to our printer and start printing. There's one thing I have to give props to the AM printer, and that is the take up roller. Now, if you had to print this job, which is, yes, it's going to be a couple of meters, without a take up roller, you're not gonna have a good time. That is going to be on the floor, you're going to need to stand on it just to get to your printer surface. You're not going to have a good day. So a bit of masking tape goes a long way and a take-up roller lets you print a far way.
I like to put three pieces on my take-up roller purely because it leaves it nice and flat across the entire surface so that my printing, A, it doesn't scratch the head and I don't have to worry about how long I print. I know that it's going onto my take-up roller straight. Alright guys, so the material that I'm going to be using today and that I've chosen is an Oxford waterproof material. Now this is the same material that you'd use to make certain jacket materialites, such as the one I'm wearing. And this is a very light, thin material, so it's not going to weigh down too much so that you can also scrunch it up or pack it away quite easily. It's not going to be really thick, so it's not going to take up too much space. And this particular material also has a really, really nice colour when you heat press to it. It has a pure white base which means your color is going to pop. I like using it for making jackets, uh, especially if they're rainproof, dustproof, it really helps for wind not going through it. So I think it's gonna be the perfect material to use to cover our printer, simply because our enemies are dust and water in this case. And we really wanna try and protect our printer against those elements. Now that we've done the sublimation part, all we need to do is hand it over to CMT and I really can't wait to see it done. So guys, it's finally back from CMT and it looks really, really good. I can't believe the way that it's come out. I think it's gonna work really well with a few minor adjustments. As I said, this was our first test, so I'm very impressed with the way it came out. And I think with a few more tweaks from here and there, we should be able to get this cover to fit really, really well. I would really love to see more renditions of this kind of thing. And here is my best, best option for covering and protecting your printer. And thank you for watching.